Here it is. Your top seven hottest comic book specul... I, I just, I can't do it. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video and in this video I'm going to open up seven comic books that I feel were speculated on at one time or another and you know I could barely get through that intro just because comic book speculation to me is something that's a little difficult to define. I think there's uh, a lot of let's just say sort of a salesperson aspect to speculation where it's not exactly as, as pure as we would all like it to be. And I think in recent years, speculation was heavily influenced by a lot of what we see in live action. And what I'm seeing more recently is a return to just comic books being speculated on for comic book reasons, which may not even be under the umbrella of speculation. Uh, and it's uh, frankly a, a place that I prefer the comic book community to be. It was always a little bit weird if you had a character and it was translated to live action. Uh, you know, I got caught up in it, like I have to have the source material. And as we've seen as time has gone on, the source material uh, is maybe just a a nod or, it's, or a reference to it. And it's not so much uh, directly 100% adapted to the live screen. And even back when it was closer, you know, you always had like a costume change because it would look ridiculous to see some of these characters in their original uh, outfits <laughs> on live screen. So I totally understand that. But what I like now is that the reasons why a comic book is significant, it's more grounded and rooted in just that. And we are looking at comic books for just those reasons and not for some false hope of character appearing in live action and then the book quadrupling in value or having a 9-8 that goes 10x or something crazy. It's really just around a book being significant and you wanting it for that significance and paying the price and looking at high grade and uh, level of scarcity and graded value and things like that. So in this order that I placed for Mile High Comics, I placed it back in December of 2022. So it's been roughly six months to keep the math easy. So I'm interested to see if you stay with me to the end of this video where I'll go through what I paid for these books and compare the cost to current fair market values. And without looking at the numbers, I'm probably guessing that either the book has gone slightly down or it's been about the same that the reasons that I picked these books up back in December was not necessarily because there was some rumor of a casting or something. It was just because these were books that I didn't have in my collection and I've kind of always wanted for those reasons of significance that I talked about. Character, creator, cover, storyline of some kind that sort of is historical or, or maybe it's you know, one that just everybody knows. And I think I'm enjoying targeting keys now more because it's really returned more to how comic books used to be speculated on. And I even saying the word speculator or speculation just, it seems like it's a catch-all, but I, I just don't know for me if it applies anymore, really. I'm just, I've never really been a proponent of that, sort of like the the hyping of a book for something because you've got a couple of really high grade copies and you want people to believe that these are the books they should have and then I the, the whole thing just seems kind of shady and it's really just back to the definition of collecting again and, and chasing books because you like them uh, and I wanted to chase these books in this order because I think by definition and to me they're keys and I, I, I want to add more keys into my collection and get away from the filler that I've I've probably been targeting a little bit too much. So let's get this order opened up that I placed with Mile High Comics in December of 22. So let's get so I want to get this order opened up that I placed with Mile High Comics back in December of 2022. Okay, here is the order that I placed with uh, Mile High Comics. Let's get this opened up. All right, let's take a look and see what I picked up. The first book is Hulk number two. Uh, this is a character, the Red Hulk there uh, on the front cover, but not his first cover appearance. 
the first cover appearance is actually in Hulk number one. And I was one of these collectors that just kind of missed out on Red Hulk. And this is actually my first sort of significant Red Hulk comic book. Uh, and this is his first appearance here. So by key definition, it, this is his first appearance in story. All of these books were purchased from Mile High Comics in near mint condition or near mint as they list it there. And I'm not going to grade these today, but uh, just looking at it briefly, uh, already seeing a little bit of a corner issue right up there. At first glance, certainly I think in the realm of a 9.4, 9.6. And you'll see that the near mint grade for these sort of moderns, it you do have a chance at 9.8, but typically they're in that 9.4, 9.6 range. Another modern quote unquote key here is Witches number one. The significance of this book, uh, covered by Mike Diodato Jr., is that this is the first team appearance of the witches Jennifer Kale, Satana, and Topaz. And the rumor here is Jennifer Kale, uh, her first appearance was in Fear number 11. She is rumored to be in the Agatha Harkness, House of Harkness series. So that was the speculation, was that the witches might appear as part of the Agatha Harkness storyline. So there you go. For all of my talk around speculation, how it ties into live action, this is probably the only real significance of this book and how it ties into the potential live action appearances of at least Jennifer Kale, if not these other characters as well. Next is a book that has no speculation that I'm aware of, and that's Invaders 28. I always like to look at Invaders on Mile High Comics. Uh, this one has a uh, dark background to it. And I always like grabbing these older Bronze Age books from Mile High just to kind of see if there's a chance at a high grade. This one looks really good. Uh, there is a slight miswrapping. Corners look sharp. But yeah, the spine looks really, really solid. I don't see anything at first glance. Uh, that bottom corner looks good too. So just trying to find sharp corners on a book from this age is always a good thing. Invaders 28, written by Roy Thomas. Pencils and cover art by Frank Robbins. A little bit of that uh, giant size X-Men feel where it's kind of bursting through the cover there. The kid commandos on this one. Next is Mystic Arcana Magic number one. And I love Magic as a character. So really any books, any solo books with her in it, I love to pick up those. This is written by Louise Simonson. And this is the first appearance of Amit in the mainstream Marvel Universe. Next book is Daredevil 53. This uh, continues the Echo storyline, and this is uh, part of her origin, specifically involving the Kingpin and her father. And love this very short run of Daredevil that was written and completely illustrated by David Mack, and he also did the cover art here. And you can't have a video about comic book speculation without featuring... I think the queen of speculation, and that's Elsa Bloodstone. This is Bloodstone number two. This is Elsa Bloodstone's second appearance. And I just saw a quote somewhere. Uh, I think it had to do with uh, the Spider Boy number seven, Spider Boy, Spider Man number seven, and Spider Man number eight featuring Spider Boy, where uh, Spider Boy, it was like, is Spider Man seven the first cameo, and Spider Man eight is the first appearance? Or is it the first full in Spider-Man 8? And somebody said that Spider-Man 8 is the second appearance of Spider-Boy and second appearances are for poor people. <laughs> I don't know why that particular comment made me laugh, but uh, I, this, is, this is me buying uh, a, a second appearance of a character at far less money than this character's uh, first appearance in Bloodstone number 1. Nevertheless, uh, I also missed out on this character, and I speculators love to talk about Elsa Bloodstone. I like to make fun of the fact that she's always talked about, and then here I am uh, being the hypocrite and went ahead and bought a copy of Bloodstone number two in that near mint condition, and it looks pretty good. Maybe just a slight issue here with this corner. I see a very slight color break possibly right it's hard to see on video but i see it right through the bag but uh pretty solid copy here again looking at these moderns near mint they're pretty close to 9.8 but typically fall in the 9.4 9.6 range 
And then the last book is Batman number six. This has been talked about for years uh, by speculators. This is the first full team appearance of the Court of Owls. Very, very cool Greg Capullo cover. Got this like nightmarish Batman owl figure. So really cool. Love the cover. Uh, Court of Owls, rumored for live action, animation, video games, you name it. Uh, just a, a great storyline by Scott Snyder and always rumored for something going on in the DCU one way uh, or another. All right, so here are the, again, the, the top seven best speculation comic books or the best comics you could ever speculate on. Uh, you know, I'm just making my own top seven list here. But uh, yeah, a lot of books that it's kind of a mix of significant comic book Things, like I said, uh, characters, appearances, storylines, origins, creators, uh, a little bit of a mix of a tie-in to some live-action speculation. But ultimately, I think we want to find out if these books are still holding their value six months later. And if I were to get these books graded, do they have any additional value if they were sent off for professional grading? So let's find out. All right, here is the order breakdown of the order that I placed with Mile High Comics, uh, December 17th, 2022. I paid $163.40 for the order. I had to pay $5 insurance, uh, no shipping, no tax. And I took advantage of their 60% off coupon code. So you could see like the amount is like just crazy stupid high. But then after the 60% discount, the books get closer to, I would say, reasonable fair market value. And then what I have here is the fair market value as provided by cover price. And what I do is I pick the greater number of the two, either the near mint cover price value or the greater value if it's in a lesser condition. And that's really, I've seen this as a trend on cover price where the book in very fine condition is listed at a higher value than near mint. I can't wrap my head around that. I wish they would just flip that by default to say if the very fine copy sold more recently for a higher price than near mint, maybe apply the price to near mint, put an asterisk by it or something. I, I don't know. It it's, continues to drive me mad. Uh, so that's why these numbers are just, I don't feel like they're fully realistic, uh, but it's kind of the only thing I have going other than just checking live prices. So I've plugged in the fair market values of these seven books, and then I've compared them here uh, at my total cost in column Z with a little bit of insurance uh, distributed across all the books. And then I can see, uh, was I able to add any raw book value to my collection? And according to the cover price values, I've added $51.60 from this $163.40 order. The couple of big winners here, uh, the Mystic Arcana Magic Book, I paid $13.11 for that. So that added $24.89 of value to my collection. And Batman number six, I paid $42.71 for that book. Cover price has that fair market value of the book raw at $65 for a $22.29 value add. Bloodstone 2, also pretty good, $33.91 to acquire that book. Cover price fair market value $48 for a $14.09 value add. Big Loser, which is number one. Cover price has that at 10 bucks. I spent $18.71. Invaders is gonna be interesting when we plug in the graded values because it's telling me raw, I lost $6.31, but that look that book looks really sharp. So I'm curious to see even at a 9.4 what kind of value that has. So let's get to it. Uh, if I'm gonna plug in my grades, you know, when I'm ordering books near mint, I assume a 9.4. And if I put 9.4 for all of these books, then the CGC value pops in and I can see probably some of the reasons why I went ahead and ordered the book at the price that I did just because even in a 9.4, Batman 6, for example, is over the $100 mark. And so even though I paid $42, I'm adding a potential CGC value of $26.10 for that book. Now, if I sent all of these books to CGC, it looks like only four of them have any significant value and then three of them do not so it would have ended up being a loss of $23.83 after all of the grading fees and the shipping back and forth so it wouldn't have been worth it just to send all of the books as is invaders 28 in a 9.4 as i said i was interested in seeing that book jump and it jumped to $58 and hulk number two being the first appearance in story of red hulk has some significance 
in a high grade even at 9.4 at just above 50 bucks. Now the fun part is if all of these books are a 9.8, what is the potential for this order? Although not realistic that every book in this order gets a 9.8, Let's just for fun speculate, to use that word, uh, what would, if, you know, if I could speculate condition on these books, it'd be a $919.31 ad if all of these books were able to get a 9.8. And that's something else that I look at when I'm evaluating whether or not this book is, is worth purchasing, even at the mile high prices, is what is the 9.8 potential? Because I feel like as the 9.8 value either continues to hold or it continues to rise in the market over time, the lesser grades will also rise with it. Maybe not as fast, but it's almost like, so that's kind of my working philosophy is that the lower grades will eventually also get pulled up by the 9.8 moving up. So I like to make sure that the books that I'm buying, whether or not they're in 9.8 obviously remains to be seen, but I want to know that yes, these books have significant value in a 9.8. Batman 6, $335.50 is the fair market value for that book in a 9.8. Bloodstone 2 at 153. Invaders 28, a $300 book in a 9.8. I would love to examine that book and, and see because that the spine looks really great. I saw one slightly non-breaking uh, tick that I think can come out in, in a quick press. So that's very interesting. Which is number one, although kind of down from a fair market value raw perspective, $180 for that book in a 9.8. And really all of them at around that $100 range and above. Just that Mystic Arcana Magic book uh, sitting just a touch uh, below at $95. Now, I think a lot of these books still have a, not necessarily a value inflation, but they, they have some value still kind of pumped into the books because of the live action speculation. But I'm trying to really apply some logic and some math uh, and my own sort of science and analytics to this, where if you think about everyone saying, well, the pandemic era inflated prices and... There was stimulus money and things of that nature. I really think for me, when I got back into the hobby around 2018, 2019, I was really big into the live action spec and the FOMO, and I got involved in all of that. And I think that's really what drove the prices to these really levels that we've never seen before. Obviously, being at home and not spending money on other things and looking at collectibles that certainly was a reason for it, but I really think the deterioration of the quality of live action and the direct ties to those characters, it's almost like that's, to me, that's the part of the value that's being pulled down and, and shrunk. So when I talk about, I'm not necessarily buying books and focusing books purely on live action speculation, that is true. Do I buy books that do have that, yes, uh, as ex as an example of, of some books that I got in this order, uh, particularly uh, Bloodstone again, although she already appeared in Werewolf by Night, the Disney Plus uh, special. I mean, you can kind of go down the line, which is number one is probably the, the worst offender uh, th because Jennifer Kale is speculated to be in Agatha Harkness or House of Harkness on Disney Plus. So I don't want to necessarily be a hypocrite. It's not that I'm buying the books because of the live action spec. It's just they happen to have them. Uh, maybe which is number one was a little bit of a stretch. But in any case, I'm finding myself doing less and less of the focusing on why the book is hot and sort of targeting that. And I think that is where speculation comes and That's where it's dangerous is instead of focusing on the comic book and the characters and the story, you're focusing on something else and hoping that the book drives value. Let me know what you think about this. Leave me a comment. Do you really uh, think that the live action speculation and, and the way that it drives values in certain comics, is that really what we need in the hobby to help keep it afloat or maybe even inject some investment into it because that's part of the excitement is seeing the characters in live action? Do we really need that or can we just kind of live with the books themselves and really just kind of take the gravy on top that is the live action counterpart. Although I would not recommend pouring gravy on your comic books. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.